I'm gonna start me a fraternity. And not just any fraternity. The coolest fraternity any community college has ever seen. We'll have so many college girls, Woody Allen will be knocking down our door. Let's rock. Thanks, Dad. Can I get a open? No Man Presents, live from the nudie bar, the Married with Children Podcast. And here are your hosts, Dan, Jamie, and Al. We are in the nudie bar, and I got this stripper who is way into me. So she'll be joining us while we do this show. That's uh, this chair next to me. That's her sweater right there. She's in the bathroom right now. I don't know. She'll be here, though, at some point. So we'll introduce her when she gets here. My name is Al, and I'm joined by... Hi, I'm Jamie, and for those of you who've never actually been this close to one before, I'm a girl. Wow. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, yeah. How many times do I have to tell you people, when you're done with the milk, fill it up again? Oh, yeah, I'm Dan. <laughs> and I'm Aaron, and if I wasn't doing this guest appearance, I would be ordering hookers and pizza until I dropped dead with a slice in my mouth and a greasy hooter in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to go, man, a good way. <laughs> he, just, he just came in with the best drop ever. <laughs> yeah, that's actually all I came here for. I'm out, guys. That, that was literally the best drop of this show ever. <laughs> well, thanks, Aaron. It's great having you on for that intro, man. <laughs> yes. yep, I'll see you guys uh, in a couple months. So <laughs> Later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are reviewing Frat Chance, Season 7, Episode 6, Original Air Day, October 25th, 1992. Desperate for a date, Bud creates his own community college fraternity in his garage. <laughs> Director Jerry Cohen, writer Larry Jacobson. Special guest stars, Shanga Barker as Ahmed. Wow. <laughs> Andy Milder as Francis. Alec Hartman as Gus. Jamie Lur Lunar as Jerry. Kathleen... McClellan as girl. <laughs> hey, the one kid that plays Ahmed, like, did you guys, I'm probably paraphrasing this a little early or whatever, but did you guys notice what his uh, work shirt said? I tried to read it for like five minutes. It would not be. It said Quickie Smart, didn't it? Yep. Oh, yeah. did it? It's yeah. really smart. Like, because I thought, I was like, does that say Quickie Smart? Is it supposed to be kind of like quickie mart but not exactly but then I, at first i was like at, later on i was like does it say ouchies mart and then i looked and realized it said quickies mart really yeah yep it's the quickie mart yeah i i could not read it for the life of me and i was staring at that thing for five minutes i couldn't read it it was just so you gotta blurry. turn it out yeah <clears throat> well we start this episode off with peg handing out lucky charms one piece uh a morning i guess uh, that's their breakfast, and then <laughs> Peg fills a milk carton with water. <laughs> like, that is gross. I like a picture is like the residue of the milk that oh. is just whatever on the side, and then it, that made it loosened, and now the water is white. It's just <laughs> gross. Well, Al actually called it milk residue. Right. <laughs> and apparently they have had that same carton since the Lindbergh baby. <laughs> right. I think that's basically like the same thing as skim milk, though. <laughs> right. Well, technically, yeah, yeah. If you start milk with, residue. <laughs> right, if you start with whole, it's actually not that bad. But uh, if you're already <laughs> rocking with skim, then that might get into just residue territory. Now, do you guys eat Lucky Charms? Oh hell yeah! Oh yeah. Yes, I just had some not too long ago. Really. They're magically delicious. Yeah. I, I, right, right around Halloween. I appreciate have. the fact that the box is pretty much the same, right? Yeah. Too. Yeah, it's it's the worst uh, when they when they change something up. <clears throat> Butterfingers. Right. Uh, don't even get me started. I've already been through this. I remember when, like, I didn't drink soda for like over two years, and then Pepsi brought back their vintage cans, and it destroyed. <laughs> <me>. <laughs> it's like, well, 
<laughs> this has to go down my throat now. <laughs> oh, man, I just love you. You're fantastic. Instead of buying them and just having someone else drink them and having the cans like laying on a shelf or something, he drank it. <laughs> I love that. It's amazing. I'm he exactly needed... what their marketing person aims for. <laughs> oh, he needed man. something to wash the PB Crips down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> well, same. The la- Kelly previously used Lucky Charms to ward off bad luck in Psychic Avengers, if you guys remember. Oh, oh yeah. Right. Right. Didn't work. Someone who will soon be on a milk carton informs us that the pancakes, eggs, and steak were delicious. The pancakes, eggs, and steak were delicious, but I couldn't finish my bacon. (laughs) Yours looks delicious. You know, it's really a shame to waste this nice, beautiful piece of bacon. (laughs) I love you both so much, I'm not sure who to give it to. (laughs) I know who I love the best. Well, I'm going to give it to the person that I love the most. <laughs> right. Herself. You You're can done. tell, once again, the writers are just so excited that they brought this cast member on. They're like, we have so many things for him to do. <laughs> right? Yeah, there's it's, so many possibilities. Let's, let's pump a bowl of food. Like, what? Every time he's on, I feel like it's such a, like, leave it to beaver thing. Like, just, like, right. I'm like, what are they trying to sell us here? Like, and it's not... It's not necessarily bad. It's just when he's on, it feels like like a big distraction from the narrative or something like that. I'm like, oh, okay, so you're just putting him in there. Well, that's not that he never has anything to do with anything. <laughs> no. Like, yeah. Ever. Ever. You're right. It's never anything to do with the narrative. We had one episode where he was the narrative, and it was atrocious. So, <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> no one's complaining. I mean, they're only complaining that we are getting thrown off track. <laughs> the the only part I liked with him in it in this episode is later on, <laughs> towards the end, right? When uh, when he's when he's dancing with the girl, that was pretty fun. Yeah, that's about it. That was what six seconds. So you're right. I like that part. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. his paycheck. That was good. But yeah. uh, why would Peg eat uh, the marshmallows? Fight over the marshmallows with them when she has all this other good food she cooked with seven. She wouldn't have any of that. Right. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't make any sense at all. Right. Then Seven laughs at Al's meal and leaves, thank God. (laughs) Peg eats the bacon herself, like you said. Uh, Then Al makes out with Peg as soon as she puts that bacon in her mouth uh, (laughs) in an attempt to steal it out of her mouth. So that's another kiss, right? Then Al and Peg kissed each other like three times in a row now, right? Three episodes. Right? so gross, though. Oh, right, yeah. My mom used to tell me about these friends of hers that, uh, like, back when she was in her 20s, she had these friends, and they were a couple, and they would go out to dinner, and they would sit on the same side of the booth, and she said, like, they would order different things, and then, like, halfway through the meal, they would kiss and swap food in their mouth. What? And so that they could share. (laughs) Brian's making the greatest face over here. I guess I've never told you that story. (laughs) The hell? And that just, that grosses me. She's like, I I can't, I couldn't eat with them. Like, I went out, I tried, went out to dinner with them one time, and I was like, I can't do this anymore. Oh, that'd be the last time. yeah, like feeding a baby bird. Like, oh, that's just I actually know a woman who fed her baby. She used to eat. She used to chew on French fries until they were soft, and then she would feed them to her baby. And wow, that grossed me out. <laughs> oh. I almost lost it one time. There were these two kids on the school bus, and they got into a fight. And one of them was. I always sat in the back of the school bus, and the, one of the kids was sitting like in the seat in front of me, and the other kid came from the front of the school bus chewing a big mouthful of Doritos and just spit it all over this kid that he was having the fight with. Oh, and like Dorito awful. bits went everywhere. And I had to put my head out the window of the school bus to keep from throwing up. Like I was gonna pick. he was mad that they now, changed the Doritos bag to everyone else out there. You're welcome <laughs> for that story. That's incredible. <laughs> Jamie's like, that's the last time I'm Rosa Parks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> No, she didn't sit in the back. Oh, right. <laughs> You're, right. Uh, he was, uh, he and the worst part is that we were on our way, we were on our way to school. So he had to go to school like that. 
Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when I was in elementary school, like, I spilled some ketchup on a white shirt. And so I just had the great idea that I would soak the rest of my shirt in ketchup, and I smelled <laughs> awful <It> just, <laughs> all, all day. I mean, I mean, I'd made sure I got every inch of that white shirt too. <laughs> wow. Hey, breakfast. But... <laughs> Very nice. I know what you're all thinking. Bud got all the brains and the looks in the family. What does he need food for? Like, no, you don't. I mean. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Your sister does. Uh, and it's weird that nobody contested that. Because, see, I thought I heard that too, but since nobody contested it, I thought I was just hearing things, so I didn't put that note down. Well, when I get my degree from an accredited community college, I might add, <laughs> I'll be the one with the lucky charms, my friends, and I'll be eating them out of Miss January's bra cups. <laughs> the January 1992 playmate was Susie Simpson. She also appeared in Michael Jackson's Pepsi commercial. Ooh. Oh, was it the, <laughs> the infamous, infamous one where he got commercial? caught on fire? Um, and movies such as St. Elmo's Fire <laughs> and Minute Works. Which I guess she likes things that burn. No. <laughs> oh, my God. And she likes garbage. <laughs> men at work is about two garbage men <laughs> I love oh, okay I thought you were calling the movie garbage and I'm like no I love that movie oh no Michael Jackson's music oh <laughs> <laughs> sorry I'm sure it's good but it's just not my style of music really <laughs> I'm sure it's good I'm sure you, you've never heard it <laughs> I'm sure the king of pop music I'm must sure be it. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's okay if you're into that kind of thing it's not heavy enough for me, man. It, yeah, I know people like that for sure. <laughs> Here's to the future. How many times do I have to tell you people, when you're through with the milk, fill it up again? <laughs> you ever find this Lindbergh kid? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, the Lindbergh baby went missing uh, in 1932. And well, he was 20 months old, and uh, then later on, a truck driver found his corpse. Ooh! Oh, he was never on a milk a carton. One. He was never on a milk carton. Oh no! That's no, the... he was never on a milk carton. Milk cartons didn't that whole missing kid on a milk carton thing didn't come around until 1980, when. Uh, Anderson, Erickson, Derry started putting pictures of missing children on milk cartons. Um, I wonder if that really worked. Yeah, what a way to mess up your breakfast. I would was... like to know. Yeah, I would be interested in knowing if someone was ever found because of a milk carton. Yeah, can you imagine you know, the guy's eating cereal and he's like, I saw that kid the other day! <laughs> and Dan, I believe you're thinking of the Hindenburg that was the joke, yes. Yeah. That nobody heard. But I heard you. Oh, word. That's why I just responded. Well, I'm <laughs> surely well, someone Jamie... found because of a milk carton. <laughs> right, right. Like, I remember I would, like, Unsolved Mysteries, whenever I was, I would watch a show, be like, well, they're never going to figure that out. Then they would be like, update. <laughs> like, oh, you know, oh, the updates were the best. Oh, yeah, because you felt complete and stuff right. like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't like loose ends. Closure. I didn't waste 30 minutes. Good. Yeah, when I was like, a kid, I always hoped that they would have an update. Of, this is going to sound so stupid. I was always hoping they would have an update of the episode they did about the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, my God. You and Jerry Herring. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nessie's out there, man. I used to watch Nessie Cam. Oh, yeah, the Nessie. Yeah, remember Jamie's Nessie Cam? Oh my god, for hours. She would watch it for hours, for waiting days. for that head and back to pop up. <laughs> She's like, oh my god, it's a head. Oh, no, just a wave. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, uh, it's just a duck laying in the water. That's <laughs> uh, a leap. <laughs> and, and the, why is the duck high on Vicodin? <laughs> <laughs> That's a callback to an older show of ours. All right, well, I would like to know how many people have watched Nessie Cam since I talked about it, so. <laughs> zero point zero. <laughs> Did something die in here? That would be me. <laughs> it's my new cologne. My own secret little recipe. I 
call it a touch of bud. <laughs> yeah, well, if anyone knew what a touch of bud was, it could only be you. <laughs> oh, like touch of, no, that's a movie. Touch of nor, touch of, I'm trying to think of touch of colognes. Touch of mud. Touch of, touch of potato. <laughs> um. Touch of ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> that's, all, that's when you put only one packet on yourself. Sniff it, baby. Drink it in. <laughs> I went to the school library. I got Vogue, Sassy, Seventeen, Lears, and several other fine periodicals. And I cut out those little fragrance inserts. And voila. Bud, those are women's scents. That's why I feel bold, sassy, yet feminine. <laughs> so, yeah, Bud cut out all those uh, fragrance samples that were in magazines. Do they even do that anymore? I never... Yeah. Oh, they do? Okay. <clears throat> well, because they're in women's magazines, so you probably don't read them. Right. Probably. As a kid, as a kid, unless J-Lo's on the cover, right? Ah, <laughs> I was waiting what for that, that joke. Sorry. Boom. <laughs> no, I did not get this week's People magazine. It's not sitting on my coffee table. No one's coming over in the next couple of weeks, are you? <laughs> I was going to come by tomorrow, man. Uh, okay, hold on. <laughs> this year I'm gonna get me a babe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right now, that's enough. Pretty soon he'll know we're laughing at him, not with him. <laughs> <laughs> Why does no one believe this year's gonna be different? Oh, come on, bud. Every year you come up with a different plan, and every plan you come up with always ends up with you going to the prom with a sweater, putting it on the back of the chair, and telling people my date's in the bathroom. <laughs> I know that sweater. I used to see it sitting next to him at the movies. <laughs> you remember that one time you brought the sweater home for dinner, and Daddy kept getting so angry because it wouldn't come out of the bathroom? <laughs> I, I, do you think the writers created that joke, or do you think they're taking that from, like, some sad person's real-life experience, or, like, somebody knew a guy who did that or something? Like, hopefully nobody ever did that, right? Oh, I'm sure it's happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not that bad of an idea if you can, if it's going to be for a few minutes. I don't see right. how you can get through an entire evening that way. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, it's at the movie theater. Like, it's just sitting next to it, the movies and stuff. Like, I'd be concerned about You should go check on your date. She Does she have a UTI? Like, what's going on? <laughs> She's fine. <laughs> Very nice. Now you two have made him feel bad. Well, all right. I'll take him out for some ice cream. <laughs> this is not a boo-boo. <laughs> ice cream won't do it. I want a woman. And by the way, taking him for ice cream does not mean going to Baskin Robbins, letting me look at all the flavors, and then taking me home. <laughs> well, this time maybe I'll get you some free samples with that little plastic spoon. I want a cone, damn it. <laughs> and a girl. I've done that before, just with the sample spoon. I've... <laughs> Dude, at because, Sam's Club, you can get, like, a whole meal. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it was the Baskin-Robbins once, and I didn't want I didn't want to eat, like, a whole bunch of ice cream because I didn't, I didn't want that many calories. Like, I didn't want to eat the ice cream. But I was, like, a really craving ice cream. So we, we went into Baskin-Robbins, and I got just a sample, <laughs> a little sample spoon. <laughs> you, you should have said, well, let me try this one. Nah, no good. How about that one? And by the time they give you five of them, you're like, eh, I'm full. I don't want anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really like your ice cream that much. Thank you, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't even like ice cream. <laughs> you hear? A girl! A girl! Ah, oh, that's right. Bud's starting his sophomore year. Ah, <laughs> uh, then it must be time for him to say, this year's gonna be different. Hey, Bud? <laughs> <laughs> it is. As God is my witness, this year there will be a real girl in the bathroom. And her sweater will smell like real girl, too. Not grandma. Well, Peggy, I see that your son is having a crisis, but do you have a second to help me out? Sure. Would you let Al go away on a fraternity reunion? You know, there is a question that comes up every day. 
Why so many of Al's college clubs and professional societies call him up to lecture or just inspire the young. So when Phi Beta Crapper calls. Yeah, which is a play on Phi Beta Kappa. Yeah. <laughs> Two other things that went on, like with this whole... um the milk carton thing i forgot to say this now they bring this joke later on with seven believe it or not in season eight episode 22 ride scare we see seven on a milk carton for missing kids (laughs) thank god oh i can't i long for that episode (laughs) i know (laughs) and earlier bud says as god is my witness this year will be different um that's a line borrowed from scarlett o'hara's gone with the wind where she says, as God is my witness, something, something. I don't know. <laughs> no beer, no Homer, make something, something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> make Homer something, something. I know that one more than the gun. <laughs> the, um, so it was pretty interesting, though, because it seems like, like I, I always like these little hints that Peggy is more promiscuous than Al. And it seems like like you have to question it because it's like, did Peggy cheat on Al before their wedding? <laughs> That's what it seems like. Yeah. And I get, because they're, like, both pretty anti-cheating. Yeah. Since the show started, at least. And um, so I, they were already 16, year, 16 years into marriage. But, you know, one would assume they never did, I guess. Yeah, th- I guess marriage was the only thing. Like, once they did that, is the only time they actually truly committed to each other. Because right. they don't seem to care before <laughs> marriage. <laughs> So I guess that's a thing. I wish somebody told me this before I got married. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> hey, that just I'm means just you're faithful, man. I yeah, know. I'm just a nice guy. I can't. I, I'm trying to fight it, but I just—that's who I am. Oh, you know what? That's right. Al didn't go to college. What was it you chose instead, honey? Selling shoes. <laughs> and nobody does it better, baby. Except everyone else who does it. <laughs> I'm just going to sell these shoes. <laughs> That'll work. No, I'm really liking this. This is a better... I think this is me. Yeah, this is more me than all that stupid studying. <laughs> now, gee, Peg, I don't regret not having gone to college because after all, then I might not have married you. Then what would have become of me? I would probably just live a, an empty, meaningless existence, ordering hookers and pizza till I drop dead. <laughs> With a slice in my mouth and a greasy hooter in my hand. Al living the dream, or trying to imagine living the dream, I guess. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. That sounds good to you, though, Aaron, doesn't it? The pizza part, especially. <laughs> <laughs> Not the hooker so much? <laughs> you know, I feel like you know what diseases you're going to get if you have right. pizza, like with a hooker. God, you never know. <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> Nobody's touching my hooters with greasy pizza fingers. <laughs> That's just gross. Right? <laughs> but, but, but I'm oddly enough getting hungry. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> it does go together pretty. Like, what about hooters and choco cake? Choco cake, hooters choco and, cake. Hooters and chocolate milk. Oh, wow, look at you. <laughs> hooters and chocolate milk, huh? <laughs> <laughs> would would you rather have Hooters and chocolate cake or Hooters and pizza? <laughs> well, can I can I have it all with the chocolate milk? So you would just want to have the full course meal with the Hooters available during the whole entire thing? Yes, that one. We could do that. Patreon. Yeah, Patreon. Yeah, for <laughs> Patreon, we'll have you eating those things with Hooters in your hands and mouth. <laughs> Actually, people will probably start paying to see it. <laughs> We might get more than 19 patrons. Uh, yeah, wow. right? We might even get a call from the FBI. <laughs> yeah. You're not going. Oh, come on. Marcy is just good, clean fun. A bunch of drunken guys looking at strippers. <laughs> and thinking of our wives. <laughs> now, this is funny because Jefferson talks about hanging out with his fraternity brothers and oogling women and everything, and Ted McGinley previously starred in 1984's film Revenge of the Nerds and its sequels. Yes, he did. Where he was a member, yep, he was a member of Alpha Beta Fraternity. Pepper. Uh, oh. Alpha Beta. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> yep. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love revenge of the nerds. What's your guys' opinions on fraternities? That'd be an interesting thing to know. Um, uh, me personally, I had a couple buddies that were in some frats, and um, <laughs> it was so much fun. Like, but that I wasn't in in it obviously i didn't even go to that school uh it was actually mit but uh it it really made for some awesome parties and and you it's good for like networking and stuff like that you know um other than that like you know all the extra stuff like i just i've never gotten it it makes no sense there's a slight amount of homosexuality <laughs> repression going on with all of it. So, yeah. So, it's just... Not, I, I don't want to... You guys hold each other's hands with your pants down? So, like, yep. something. <laughs> something. But, yeah, I just never got the whole frat thing. But I know a lot of people that still talk to, you know, people that, that were... that they were in frats with in college and stuff to this day. So, I guess to each his own. Yeah. I think it would have been nice to be a part of something like that, even though it's usually just, like, dirtbags and stuff, and, like, people doing horrible things to each other, and people, like, being very raunchy. I feel like you're too much of a leader to be a part of something like that, though. Yeah, well, eh, maybe. But I also think that's the cliched Revenge of the Nerds, like, uh, version of it, you know? Like, I think in real life, yes, I don't think they're all rapists, no. Like, probably only No, I... I knew when I was in college, there were there were a lot of frat guys that were decent guys and right. like whole frats would like the whole fraternities were just full of great guys. Right. And then there were some that were really? a bunch of douchebags. Yes. yes. Um, there were like this one, this one frat got uh, suspended because they got caught killing a raccoon and oh. cook, cooking it on their grill. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. Um, no. Yeah. So they got in trouble for that, obviously, they for animal shouldn't. cruelty. And uh, I mean, that was just it was disgusting. And they were disgusting guys. Like that's just just the whole fraternity was known for being raunchy. Yeah. I mean, just a bunch of dirt bags, And like you didn't want anything to do with them. But there were some really nice frat guys, too. So it just kind of depends on who they were. And because what, what you notice is they tend to they tend to gather with their own. So, like, right. I guess there's a reason guys pledge specific fraternities because right. it's a bunch of guys like them. So yep. if you, you know, typically know a few decent guys who are in one frat, then chances are good that the whole fraternity is going to be at least, you know, passively good people. Right. As far as sororities go. Right. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, it's a little I mm. never, ever, 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 ever wanted to pledge a sorority. And my roommate did because her mom made her. She was a legacy. Oh, and her mom God. made her. Dan's a legacy. She ended up <laughs> dropping out before they even she didn't even make it through Hell Week. Like, she completely just dropped out because she's like, I can't deal with this. They're vapid bitches and I can't stand it. <laughs> so she ended up not finishing. It's just that's never been my kind of thing. Yeah. Overall, though, I think it's a I mean, I think it can be a good thing. It can actually the, down the line. It can be good for job hunting and, you know, if you're in road trip, it can find you a place to stay for the night. When you're oh, out. did oh, you know yeah. a <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think I know anything about fraternities? Desperate girls coming from everywhere, <laughs> trying anything to land a college man before he becomes successful and realizes he can get a much better and bustier girl. <laughs> Not that it wasn't fun for me. <laughs> Doing anything with anybody. My once demure dress lying ripped and forgotten. As forgotten as I was when the sun came up. Jim, you bastard! Why don't you return my clothes? Uh, Marcy's like 30-something, and she's still... <laughs> she's still screaming about Jim, the fraternity guy. <laughs> Well, you know this by now. Marcy's the kind of person that doesn't let stuff go. Right. No. no. Yeah, she is just... I would love to know. I mean, of course, there's a TV show, and it is what it is, and we do try to bring it to life and, and make... And, like, build histories and build, oh, is Al this kind of person? Do you think Kelly is doing this because of that? And Marcy... We do it a lot with Marcy because uh, there's so much 
of her gazing into nowhere and talking about her past. It almost makes you wish that Marcy was just a real person and they were just filming all this stuff. Right. Because I would love to know her number. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right. Yeah. How many guys did Marcy sleep with? I would love to know. And it it would be fascinating to go back and really like have a you know, fly in the wall or whatever view of her entire sexual history. Right. But unfortunately, it's all in good fun. There is not a girl on earth that wouldn't do it for a fraternity guy. <laughs> oh, and then after an incredible night, go back to your high school sweetheart, tell him he's the only one, and plan the wedding. Hell, <laughs> oh. I was talking about my friends. You're the only one, baby. You too, baby. <laughs> All right, sure. Th there were girls, but that wasn't the only part of a fraternity. <laughs> There's so much more. No, actually, that was it. <laughs> That's it. That's what I'm going to do. What? Get a picture of Mr. Darcy, paste it to your face, and wear it to school? <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Classic. Classic. Uh, especially Jefferson laughing with it. Right. <laughs> Almost reluctantly. <laughs> No human hand wash. <laughs> now, most people remember that Kelly was the soup girl in the locker room, in the boys' locker room. I wow. mean, uh, soap. <clears throat> soap, sorry. I yes. like the, the, I like soup better. <laughs> yeah, she, she stood naked in the boys' shower with a sign around her neck that said, it was supposed to say soap, so guys would walk up to her and rub their hands all over her. <laughs> Can you imagine this? Um, you know, she might have been soap girl at one point, but as of today, the uh, the Golden Globes nominations came out, and she was nominated for Dead to Me today. Oh wow! Wow, Isn't that awesome! <laughs> like all these years later, we're doing a show about uh, you know in the early '90s, and all these years later, she's crushing it. See that Golden Globes crowd should listen to the podcast and like join the Patreon, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And in a very related topic, J-Lo was also nominated for Golden Globe. <laughs> <laughs> for Hustlers. Oh my god, she was! Oh my god, she's not kidding. She was. Wow. Yeah, what do you think, I'm obsessed with her? I'm telling you there's the news here. Yeah. You just seen that in your feed. Dude, there's public knowledge. <laughs> so... <laughs> it's only public knowledge because you telling everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start me a fraternity, and not just any fraternity, the coolest fraternity any community college has ever seen. We'll have so many college girls, Woody Allen will be knocking down our door. Ooh. That was pretty good. <laughs> well, this was the year in 1992 when it became public knowledge that Woody Allen was in love with his step, well, Mia Farrow's adopted Daughter. 22-year-old. Yeah, and then he ended up marrying her later in, like, 1993. Oh, she was, wait, she was 22 at the time? Yeah, and he was 56, I think. But so I think that, that would make sense when she said college girls. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. And she was also slow, which makes this even more horrible. <laughs> like, she was, like, I wouldn't say, like, uh, technically Down syndrome or anything, but she was, uh, she was, a little slow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You'll have to forgive my colleague. He's a little slow. <laughs> <laughs> the town is that way. <laughs> oh, my God. How did you pick that up that I was doing that? You're so uh, the way you said little slow, I was like, it's a little slow. The <laughs> town is that way. <laughs> so, yeah. Woody Allen is such a creep, man. But, uh, <laughs> hey, everything's forgivable, man. Look, we're putting Michael Vick as the captain of the Super Bowl team. Is he? I, wait, did they really? Yeah, he's going to be the captain this That's year. That's horrible. Yeah, a fraternity. And we're just going to take the cream of the school. Well, we're all here. Cream of the school, right, guys? <laughs> I'd like to welcome all you charter members to the first meeting of Alpha Gonna Get Him Fraternity. <laughs> Only the best of the best. So we get a 65-year-old dude, uh, a loser, 
and an Indian with the Quickie Mart uniform on. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, he really knows how to pick them. Remember our motto. Looky, looky, we're going to get some nooky. <laughs> I did not think that was funny. Of course, you can take that cookie and stick it up here. <laughs> we'll do good on our tests, so we'll feel some breasts. <laughs> now, brothers, if we can all join hands for the Alpha Gonna Get Him secret salute. So then they do this weird thing that I just... It only works when Al walks in, but before that... So their thing is that they pull their pants down and then join hands and then do the honk-honk thing. That's what I'm saying. That's what I mean about frats. Like, it's just weird. Like, what are you doing? Right. Like, why is this the thing that you want to do now that this frat's here? <laughs> right? Why isn't it like... Like playing Goldeneye or something. Or I'm telling you, <laughs> that, that, no, that's my biggest thing with frats. It's like, why do you have to get weird with it? Like you just said, like, like, yo, give one person the golden gun and just and just have a free for all. Like, let, like, let's see what happens. Like, decide it that way. All yeah, the weird paddling and all the creepy stuff. Like, that's why I hate it. It just yeah, it makes no sense. Like the leader of the frats, like, hey, I got you guys. Got to get your dicks out, and I want to see them. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's like, we're going to show you how to make roofie culottes. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> you Chad. <laughs> yeah, well, the only payoff to this whole thing is that while these morons are doing this, Al, the, like, the, he presses the garage door button, I guess, yes. and the door opens. He drives in and smashes their table of snacks and stuff, and he just doesn't even acknowledge it at all. And then he walks out of his car and looks at them, and man, Al's reaction is just so spot on. <laughs> just totally creeped out. And then he even says if... Hi, Dad. <laughs> uh, we're having sort of a secret ceremony here. <laughs> Not secret enough, son. <laughs> now, bud... Remember when I told you that if you ever had any problem, you could come to your mother and I and talk about it? <laughs> well, now, please don't. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, my dad would always catch me in weird situations like that, and it was always so painfully awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like what? Anything that you could uh, paint a picture over the radio for us? Yeah, um... <laughs> I can't believe I'm even telling this. No, it's fine. Go ahead. Years ago, this, it was like 2009 or 2010, me and a bunch of friends were going to make a parody of uh, the Journey video, Separate Ways. If you've never nice. seen this video, it is like they like clearly the, er, like the early days of music videos. They had no idea really what to do or where they were going, and it was uh, very, very 80s. So – me and like a buddy of mine and like another buddy of mine, like we picked out these like really just over the top outfits and had like speedos and stuff on and like we're looking really 80s and all this stuff. And like <laughs> it was the middle of the night. Wasn't that the video where they were on the boardwalk or? Yes. Was, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's the middle of the night and I have this like sleeveless shirt that's yellow with a tiger on it and like these like the, the speedo on okay and then my buddy has like a speedo on with like a skin tight shirt and my other buddy he just can't stop laughing because like and he's like i'm not even putting mine on and then like of course <laughs> hear the worst thing you can possibly hear because like i said the middle of the night my dad coming down the stairs oh, so oh, my God. one buddy that's dressed in the outfit immediately dives underneath the desk that's in the room and pulls the chair in. And I'm looking for somewhere to go. I do a complete circle and just, like, in a panic, sit on the floor Indian style. And my dad comes in the room and he's like, what is happening here? And of all the words for me to choose, I, I end up saying, um, because I thought I was going to surprise him with the music video and show it to him and have him be disappointed in me that way. And I was like, it was going to be a surprise. I was going to show you. And he just <laughs> walks away shaking his head. And he this says, wasn't how this I was supposed to go. 
It was going to be a surprise. I was going to come out to you this Wednesday. That's, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> the way he took it. Because I, I was like, well, I was trying to explain the idea to him. And I, of all things to say, I was like, what are you thinking? He's like, uh, I think you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. Can't believe that was his first notion. He's like, what do you yeah. want to do with your life? You're like, I want to dance. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> what is that? It's oh, days, man. man. And <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> When I was about 14, my best friend was spending the night with me. She's, she was at my house all the time. She was always staying at my house. And, like, we were sleeping in my bed. And in the middle of the night, we decided to – I don't even remember now why. We decided to change sides of the bed. Like, we decided we wanted to switch sides of the bed. So <laughs> the fastest way to do that was for me to climb over her and her to roll. Oh, like, my God. Roll the, roll the opposite way as I was climbing over. In the middle of me climbing over, my dad walked in my bedroom. <laughs> and I'm, I'm on top of my bed. <laughs> and he just walks in and then he just walks right back out and closes the door. <laughs> He's like, nope. I was like, oh, nope. man. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I would share an embarrassing story, but I guess you guys did it already, so let me just move on. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh my God! So, well, let's get into these guys for a little bit. So, the Indian guy, his name is Shanga Barker, and he's famous for Mr. Robot. I never heard of it. What's that? <laughs> literally the best show on TV. I just want to say, if I've never said it on this show, literally the best show on TV. It's got three more episodes left. It's not even finished yet. It surpasses every show for me, including Breaking Bad, all of them. I don't believe that. Uh, j- uh, dude, you gotta watch it. If you watch it, you'll be like, oh, okay. You are so obsessed with Jesse Pinkman, I do not believe you'd throw him over for Malik. It's, it's not about that. It's And Al Camino didn't take away from the uh, the perfect Breaking Bad ending, but at the same time, when you can craft a show and be putting in clues from episode one, season one, that literally tie in all the way through four seasons, it when you craft something that deliberately and brilliantly, it, it's got to take it. And that's all anybody's got to do. Just map it out before you even start. Now you tell map me. Map it all out. Yep. Yeah, well, if Suns did that, they would have taken out the whole last season and just added like the last two episodes. Oh, that's messed up, dude. You know it's true, though. Don't talk about Sun Season 7. We try to forget that. <laughs> you can't, though. That's what I'm saying. It, We're trying to forget that ever happened. It's real, bro. Well, it's like that, that last season of Roseanne. Everyone just ignores it. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, you just ignore the last season of Suns. I'm telling you, greatest show on Earth if you just ignore that. And now Katie Seagal's on Roseanne, right? Yeah. Yep, mm-hmm. or the Connors. Connors, yes. And she, and she was nominated for a Golden Globe. She was? No. Oh. <laughs> she wasn't that good. She was just a bartender. How good could you be? <laughs> uh, wow, she really poured that drink convincingly. She definitely went to bartending school. <laughs> she method acted for this. Yeah. So the other guy is Andy Milder, the uh, the younger loser. He's famous for Apollo 13, Armageddon, Frost slash Nixon. Uh, Transformers. Now this guy has a ton, 104 acting credits. Okay. He was in Weeds, Austin and Alley, Batman. And that's what I know him from. Batman. Uh, Batman. Oh yeah, he was in Batman. But um, no, um, he was the. He's basically like a main character on Weeds, which which they're reviving again. Like, and this is what I'm saying though. We just keep coming back to this, but I, I feel like with this show, it's inevitable. It's only a matter of time. Uh, I don't know. I nah. dude, I don't know, man. They're bringing back shows that like that they're, they're just going off nostalgia. Like I'm sure they don't even have scripts for half of these as they get going. They're just like, yeah, we're just going to go off the name and they work. Like and there's no reason why Married with Children wouldn't not only kill it but probably like lead the pack. Like they'd probably be like one of the top rated shows, I think. They would. Um QMA, let's just just for argument's sake or for fun talk, try to let's try to um, see <laughs> how amazing would it be, right? If they brought back Married with Children mm-hmm. and it went for like six, seven episodes or so and people were so happy and loving it, right? And 
Ed O'Neill tweets something about, like, black people or something, and he makes a joke. <laughs> and the joke doesn't go over well. And they literally throw him off the show, but everyone else says, hey, this is my big shot for a comeback, blah, blah, this is going great. And then they start season two and call it The Bundies, and Al died. <laughs> Do you think that it could continue and would it be successful? No, not a chance. I mean, Al Bundy, not a married with children without Al Bundy or a Bundy's that just wouldn't work. There's no way. How fascinating is it that the show is called Roseanne and still somehow it continues without her and people are mostly OK with it? That's because I think everyone really enjoyed the other characters always. That's what it was. Always. Right. Like, I I probably identified with her the least. I liked all the other characters. Yeah, I you know? actually, I remember being a kid, I had, I had, I, oddly enough, I identified with Mark the most. <laughs> Who's Mark? <laughs> Mark. His boyfriend. Big Bang Theory. No, no, you think, that's David. That's Darlene's oh, that's boyfriend. David. Yeah, Mark was Becky's uh Husband. Oh, that and guy! Husband. Oh, that dirtbag guy and with the well, generic face. The, act, the actor is dead now. Is he? Yeah, he died. Yeah, dude, he was funny as hell on that show. Big time. Um, um, <laughs> I know you do about someone. But you don't. You guys don't think people like Bud, Kelly, and Peg, and Marcy, and Steve, and Jefferson as much as everyone else likes the rest of the people in Roseanne? Uh, I think that it would depend on the writing. The writing would have to be fire. It would have to uh, – I, I want to say in a lot of ways that they, they would have to change the show. But also, too, we're talking hypothetically if that did happen with Ed O'Neill. I think Ed O'Neill's way too smart for that. Uh, I know Roseanne, <laughs> she's always been – A loudmouth. Yeah, really up the wall. And she even knew she she shouldn't have done that. She went on Joe Rogan, like we were saying earlier, uh, and, and talked about it. And she was like, yeah, no, I was off my meds. Like, I should not have been doing that or whatever. And I don't even think that that's that big of a deal. Like, I know everybody turned on her and she got kicked off the thing. But Ed O'Neill's been doing this for a while still. It's not like he's coming out of retirement. Like, he's a pro. He's does, he's killing it to this day. So Does Ed O'Neill even have social media? No, no. <laughs> really, it says a lot about Al Bundy that although we do love all the rest of these characters, he is just not replaceable or no. nor is he not even not replaceable, but just ignorable. You know, uh, Roseanne's ignorable, I guess, because people are just riding with this and people really seem to like the Connors. And I, I admit, I do too. I mean, but it's like, in your, when you're in that position, you can't say stuff like that because everybody gets offended over everything. And now you're representing companies, you're representing people who work with you. Money. Is it staying? Money. Yeah, there's a lot of money. Advertisers and stuff. So you can't write. Right. You're just an idiot for writing stuff like that. I don't know. I'm just able to go with it just because I really wanted to watch this new show. With Al, though, you got this loser thing, but also, like, Al Bundy's a hero. <laughs> so right. you take away that aspect of it, and what do you have? You have all the exchanges between the rest of the family. So with Peg and Bud and Pet and then you add in, like, I'm sure you could, but it, it it's missing that main element that that's not something that I'd be interested in watching. So, ho so hopefully it would be all or nothing, you know? Yeah. With all. Definitely. Yeah. Well, the last person there, that old dude is Alec Hartman. Um, he died in 2002. He was known for the equalizer home front, dangerous women and danger theater. A lot of danger. <laughs> the old guy knocked over a frat table. I have seen him many times at my neighborhood convenience store looking at nudie magazines. <laughs> he howls like a wolf and pinches the paper bazoombas. <laughs> Gee, I don't know if there's going to be much room for us and the babes with your father's car in our frat house. <laughs> Mr. President... You promised us we would be cool in a cool place. Well, I'll tell you this. I don't feel cool, my friend. I think I speak for us all when I say I feel like pulling up my pants and going home. Gee, maybe we should all just forget this fraternity and do what my dad does. Stand underneath escalators and look up the dresses of fat women. Why would anybody want to do that? Well, you've obviously never done it. 
<laughs> Don't knock it till you tried it. Like, why fat women in particular? Like, what, if a, if a 10 wall goes up the escalator, you say, oh, let's not look at this. Avert your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> She's too hot, guys. Maybe they feel like they won't be, like, arrested if it's fat women. The cops are just like, eh. Yeah, yeah. It's like, that's, this is punishment enough. What else could I do to these guys? That's... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, we're going to hell. Hey, nobody goes anywhere. You know why? Because I'm going to get us chicks. How? Toga party, baby. If you think we look cool now, wait till the chicks get a load of us in sheets. <laughs> Toga party, baby. And it was just really awkward. Uh, yeah, it was. Yep. Right? They've been throwing this baby around with everybody. Whoever is writing this show lately. I know it's a mix of people, but they keep on throwing in this baby at the end of everything. Um, Jefferson did it three times in the one episode. <laughs> it's always weird when people do that, like especially like in songs and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. I, like, baby, no, the, I can buy you to a kiss from a That's room. different. But... <laughs> in the 90s, in the, in the like mid to late 90s, for some reason, James Hetfield of Metallica went through a phase where he said baby at the end of of everything. Like, not in the writing. Like, he would perform old songs. Like, if instead you listen to... Of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Instead of yeah, he would replace it with baby. So, like, if you listen to, like, the S&M album, he has so many babies in it that he just oh, throws in. Oh, that's like, right. Dude. It's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> really? That's yeah. It's, oh, I gotta hear this. It's really weird because he'll just be like, out of nowhere, he'll be like, master, baby! Like, <laughs> oh my god! That was so good. Oh my god, that was so good. That's I thought that was Hatfield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like Jefferson said it all those times. Then Al in the last episode, uh, Al was like, I-, "I want it, baby," you know, and like uh, I think Marcy said it recently, and like everyone's just been saying it. But when Bud said it, it just it was out of place and awkward. It's like, why would he say it to those guys, and why would you? Add that to the end of that sentence. Right. Unless you're James Hetfield or Boys to Men <laughs> or Montel Jordan, you shouldn't be saying it. Or Seal. Yeah. Or Seal. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. Yeah. So, what movie would we like to see? Why do we have to go out, Peg? Isn't it enough I know I'm married to you? Do we have to tell the whole world? <laughs> oh, here's something we could all enjoy. A fine foreign film about a young Peruvian girl who lives in the rainforest and dreams of having a bicycle. <laughs> Any hooters? <laughs> um, well, he better watch something starring Alexis Amor, because otherwise I don't see where you're going to find one of those. <laughs> That's a reference only pervs will get. <laughs> Francois Lumac film. He explores the mind. Well, I prefer the Joseph Zipper production of They Exploded Out of Their Bras. <laughs> now, Marcy, you might like that one. It's a film about women. <laughs> I want to see a movie with Mel Gibson's butt. <laughs> Mel Gibson, in 1992, he starred in Forever Young and Lethal Weapon 3, and his butt was also referenced in Kelly Does Hollywood, if you guys remember that. <laughs> Man, I love Forever Young. That's a damn good movie. I thought you were about to say, I love Mel Gibson's butt. <laughs> I love Mel Gibson's butt. <laughs> everyone was everyone was all about Mel Gibson's butt when Lethal Weapon came out. I've never been a butt girl. Just not like that whole scene in Tango and Cash, like everybody was freaking out about. I'm just uh, not, not obviously not Mel Gibson, but still, I'm just not a thing. I, I've always been back and shoulders. Boobies, 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 boobies. (laughs) Hi, pumpkin. You know, I haven't heard anybody chant that word since me and my girlfriends were standing around and this old guy in this Dodge drove by and... Ew, daddy! <laughs> well, that, that must have been the time when, when Bud borrowed the car. <laughs> hey, look 
everyone. It's Dorf on golf. <laughs> Dorf. Yeah. Yeah, and I uh, I just don't think that joke is funny, because Dorf didn't wear a toga. Right. Did he? Right. But right. short. But you. I mean. What does that have to do with his toga? Yeah, nothing. He's always short. So. <laughs> she should have said, "Here's the the little Caesar's guy jumped off the box, and here he is." Oh my God, that would mm-hmm. be funny. Right. Instead of that. Party party. <laughs> Yeah, pizza, pizza. Yeah, party, party. <laughs> Which apparently Little Caesars is uh, based out of Michigan. Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, Garden City, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> He's like 4812 Michigan Street. Like, he knows the exact address. He's got a picture. Every pizza manufacturer Aaron knows. Yeah, but I, I used to live up there, so got that common ground. But I know too much. Mike Illich was the founder of Little Caesars. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You're like a trivia guy. I know. Well, later on, he went He went on to own the Red Wings and like the Tigers oh. and do a bunch of stuff for Detroit. So like. He got his Red Wings? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I see what you're saying. Well, as everybody knows, Dwarf in Golf is a 1987 comedy starring Tim Conway, Peg's father in the show. So, uh, he's dressed up in a toga with a wreath around his head. How's the party going, honey? Let me put it this way. Uh, Mom, Mrs. Starcy, would you guys like to be the girls at my party? (laughs) If you do go, I I won't call you Mom, okay? I'll call you Red. (laughs) How, uh, How weird and awkward is that? It's just weird. Mom, come to my party and be the chicks. Like, ugh. Right? That's the creepiest, weirdest thing ever requested. Like, yeah, like I I would just have assumed to not have a party rather than like, mom, be the life of the party. The only thing going for him is that he does think Marcy's hot. So he doesn't think that's so much of a dip, you know? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But the mom's involved, so it doesn't matter. It cancels that out. Uh, so they, they bite, and they walk in the garage, and they walk immediately out of the garage. <laughs> they are horrified by these three guys in the frat. They rejected you, huh? <laughs> How about you, Kel? You know what? I'd be delighted to help. Okay. Now, for those of you who have never actually been this close to one, I am a girl. <laughs> And they're amazing. And how cool would it be for them that they, the first time they're near a girl, she's that high? You know, it's like, wow. Right. <laughs> this is real. I love how she looked during that scene, too, by the way. Just, I love the dress. I thought she just, the overall, I just think she looked fantastic. Mm hmm. She looked good for this whole entire uh, exchange. Yeah, yeah, she did. Indeed. Now, all girls want men. But before you get your hopes up, this is a man. <laughs> now, can anyone tell me what this man has that you don't have? Ahmed. Large earlobes which denote an enormous pleasure giving masculine force? <laughs> That's one. What about caring and sensitivity? Mm, not in a guy, no. <laughs> now, to continue the lesson, man. Boys. Yum. Tui, tui. Kill. I think that'll be just quite enough. No, wait, one second. I'm not finished yet. Gobble, gobble, gobble. <laughs> I'm Kelly Bundy. That's my opinion. Call me. Basically, just showing them that they're absolute <laughs> loser creeps. <laughs> And not giving them any tips to help them whatsoever. Just basically just stating why they're losers and why they're in the situation they're in. Basically, in a a way, saying that they have no hope. Thank you, Kelly Bundy. As the song goes, she goes, duh, for the money. (laughs) Look, guys. Now, I may not know much about girls, but I do know this much. If you put on a sheet, even one with horsies... Which, by the way, Francis, looks just terrific on you. <laughs> Girls will come. They will, they will. 
Wait a second. I hear some people coming now. Guys, quick. Look cool. Assume honk positions. <laughs> so he thinks women are coming into the garage during this lame-ass party they're having. <laughs> he has them all stand together and put their hands out like they're going to honk. Right. And it's And right there, you're like, dude... He is just as bad as these guys. Right. If not worse. Like, he's a Bundy. Be a leader. Right. Like, he tries to act like the voice of reason, and, like, he's the person closest to being cool. Right. But he repeatedly just shows us that he's not. Right. You know? And it's like, come on, dude. You're so close. Like, you talk like you're normal and they're not, but, but then you think women are coming in the room, so you say, let's stand around and put our hands out to honk? You really think that's going to work? Right. He's like, he's very smart and then illogical once uh, uh, like a chick comes into play or the potential of chicks. Right. It's over with as soon as that happens. Or any bit of pressure where he has to like take the lead and like, all right, time to step up to the plate. And then he just completely squanders it. Right. (laughs) With with stupid lines. And even going to Peg and Marcy and asking him to come in, that's a loser move too. That shows you're not any different. Right. Yeah, if you need your mom to come in, like, it's a whole <laughs> new level. Right. Quite a grotesque little tableau, eh, Peg? <laughs> yes, but at least they've got their pants up this time. <laughs> if nobody knows, tableau is a group of models or motionless figures. So, <laughs> a group of guys standing there with their hands ready to honk is a tableau. <laughs> okay. Like why was what was why was that necessary? That word in itself. <laughs> yeah, why is Al like when would Al ever use a word like that? Would he suddenly get a, a thesaurus? Right. Couldn't we, he just say, man, we that's... all know he he didn't go to college, so <laughs> right. Why couldn't he just say, wow, this is weird? Our kid's getting weird instead of <laughs> the tableau. I've never heard that. Right, the tableau. Right, like what? Wait, what are we doing here? We're just making up words. I guess we're trying to use smart words because there's like a college episode. Is that what's happening? Who's uh, we we said who wrote it, but like between all the baby and the tab blue, like they're throwing some, they're just throwing everything out there. <laughs> I think Brick City. I think his use of the word tableau. Uh, oh, I said Lou. I'm oh, sorry. Was um, <laughs> this was supposed to be out of character. Like, you know, it's, it's, that's why it's funny because it's out of character for him. Kind of like we had that same thing with Kelly, um, back, was it during one of the England episodes or was it after that where she said something that was totally out of character and it just didn't come off very funny. I think it was after that. I think it was in the beginning of this season Hmm. and, but it was just, it wasn't funny because it just didn't. Yeah, you're right, it was. Remember she had a bunch of clunkers, yeah, in the beginnings of episodes? Yeah, I think it was there. But I ever, I thought this one worked. I, did, I thought it kind of worked. I thought it was funny. Grotesque tableau. Well, um, it's weird. I, hopefully we haven't been doing this show wrong this whole time. So, when you go on marriedwithchildren.fandom.com, this episode in there it says it was written by Ellen L. Fogel. But then if you go on IMDb, it says Larry Jacobson. Right. I've always been doing IMDb. Mm-hmm. So either I've been wrong the entire time or I've been right the entire time. <laughs> but one of these are wrong. Yeah, but IMDb usually is the standard, you know. Okay. For every like, I mean, everybody I know uses that, you know. If it's wrong, shame on them. Somebody should probably correct that. Yeah, I don't have time to like... You know, if you can't write it down for me, then I'm I'm not doing it right either. Then. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I love how all four of them have to go to the, the car and they have to walk through this and they check out this whole thing. Because normally these, like, stories are always, like, separate from what they're doing and there's no interaction. You don't really get to see them interacting with the whole situation as a whole. So, I liked that whole uh, thing where we walk through. Is this what your frat was like? Sure was. Except there was girls' booze and a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Jefferson's the man in this episode. Um, there are definitely those things that we talked about that are off, but he does have some great lines. Yeah. No, he's good here. So, so Al pulls out of the garage, then he pulls back in and steals their bowl of chips. <laughs> 
How long? There's not even any chips. I chips. love that. Chips. The look on Al's face is amazing when he does this. <laughs> right? And that feels like such a dad thing to do also. Right? <laughs> such an Al Bundy thing to do. <laughs> and the other two bowls are empty. Yeah. <laughs> Why were they even there? I don't know. Uh, but, honey, I want you to look after Seven. That is, of course, unless he'd cramp your style. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> hardy, hardy, guys. I'd love to hang with you guys, but I got a date. Later, gators. <laughs> Thank God for that. So Kelly does finally chime in with some advice. Come on, guys. Don't be down. They say that there is a girl for every guy. Of course, they just say that. <laughs> Look, let me help you the best I can. Guys, there's no shame in being gay. <laughs> what do you guys think about that? Basically, what she's telling them is that all hope of them having a woman on top of them is lost, and they have a better chance, and they would have better luck. Well, maybe she was insinuating they hook up with each other. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, the whole, guys, there's no shame in being gay thing, like, I think in today's episode, like, that would just go without saying, like, in today's <laughs> world. Yeah, right. Yeah, back then, it was, right. people were more in the closet, because it was so not accepted that much in 1992. I mean, even Amanda Burst was in the closet at this point, you know? Yeah, like, the line wouldn't, it, like, it, 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 hit, it hit something back then and, like, had a crowd laugh, but today you would probably hear, yeah, ooh, like, ooh, or crookets or something like that, just because it's like, like, everyone would think, well, of course there's no shame in it, like, kind of thing. So it'd be a weird it'd be weird if that line happened in a show today. Come on guys, she was only kidding. If we were gay, the food would be better and there'd be plenty of good-looking girls here making us dance against our will. <laughs> I am tragically disappointed. This is supposed to be a party, but still no large heinies have presented themselves to our honking hands. <laughs> yeah, I joined this fraternity to relive my youth. Well, I am I wasn't getting anything then either. <laughs> Man, I could have gotten more tail playing bingo with mom and her friends. Do they play as we speak? For I have found that an old woman is as grateful as a small dog when you pet it. <laughs> Just let me change my clothes and I'll give you something to pet. Not me, you ninnies. <laughs> talking about girls. My dad may have taken the chips, but we still have the dip. And I'm going to go get us the Hooters to go with it. <laughs> Would you still be listening to Bud at this point? Like, this has been a disaster from the beginning, and he's still promising you something. So once he changes out of my clothes, all these women will show up. I would just walk out of that house, man. He, oh, yeah, don't... he would have lost me at Ninny's. <laughs> Like what? <laughs> like what are we? What are we saying? Between ninnies and the last word, like I feel like they're just make they're just looking in the in the dictionary, you know. And at this point, they essentially do just walk out before he <laughs> even does anything. So right. Um. <laughs> so Kelly is playing Scrabble with seven. Ha! Double word score. <laughs> NBC is not a word. <laughs> It's a word. It's just not a network. <laughs> Zing. <laughs> Where is everybody? They went home. Ahmed and Francis were bored, and uh, Gus said his prostate was flaring up. <laughs> I can't believe this. I got girls, great ones, but they're expecting fraternity guys. I can't lose these girls. I just can't. Oh, bud. Where are the guys? We want to dance. Uh, they'll, they'll be right there. And there'll be some dancing fools, too. So somehow Bud has real girls in the garage. The frat guys went home. 
So Jefferson and Al replaced those losers. <laughs> so first he wanted to replace the the mom and Marcy. Then he replaces you know Al and Jefferson for the uh, the losers. And they are dad dancing with these babes. Yes, they are. Al is dad dancer expert level at this point. <laughs> Killing it. Crushing it. <laughs> His goofy dad dancing is so spot on now. The Bundy Boogie. It's pretty perfect. It is. It's actually perfect dad dancing. I don't know how he developed it how it came so natural because I'm the same age as him essentially and I if I dance like that it would be awkward I think it's pretty awkward when he does it too <laughs> cause for him it looks like it fits better though I was saying it's almost like he can get away with it because he's Al and stuff cause he's yeah cause like, like, I'll put it like yeah. if I went to like a wedding and I seen Al dancing like that <laughs> I would be like huh Look at that. Uh, there's a dad dad dancing. Now, if I went to a wedding and seen Alex dancing like that, I'd be like, whoa, Alex is here. And then I'd be like, wow, look at the way he's dancing. <laughs> that's weird. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> I'm not going to fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I have more of a, like a, a youthful uh, vibe about me, so it would be weird. He, he seems like an old dad. I can't imagine I'd be doing that. Because he, he's been doing dad dancing since, like, three years ago, so I don't know. I just don't know when I'm supposed to start that, but... I think I'm only going to do <laughs> dad dancing from now on. <laughs> That's all you're going to do? Yeah. Alex is like, I don't know when I'm supposed to start. <laughs> oh, no, I'm behind. Maybe it's... You don't have to unless you're actually a dad. Yeah, but I should have been a dad for 20 years. Uh, <laughs> Most people have kids when they're 20. Not me. I mean, that's the ones that, like... <laughs> They're like... called idiots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I know so many people that got married when they were 20 because the other one was pregnant and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> right. there, was a, there was a while there in my life... Like, oh, that's true love, bro. Like, what? Yeah. There, was, there was so long there where someone in my life that I knew would be like, well, I'm getting married. I'd be like, so she's pregnant. Like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Boy or girl? Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. Oh, you're getting married? Is it going to be a boy or a girl? <laughs> That's great. I'm, I'm still, you know, what's weird is I'm like, I'm 32. And I'm at that age now where, like, actually, I'm past that age where people are getting married or people are married and they have kids. And, like, when my friends come to me and they're like, like or when I find out they're pregnant, I'm like, oh, no, like. <laughs> like, like, I know. Oh, yeah, so, it's, I'm like, sorry. Yeah. Like, what do I say? Like, like, is this bad or good? Like, I still don't know how to. Re <laughs> like, I'm still reacting bad as if I'm like, it, like in high school or something. Like, right, oh, right, right, over. Right. Yeah. Oh man, that sucks. What are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And they're like, no, I'm, I'm happy. I can't wait to see my. The kid. weirdest thing to me though is the people that I knew, you know, in high school, middle school, whatever. Their kids are in high school, middle school now, and then you just start thinking about time and just like, oh wow. So you start doing the math in your head, and that's usually when my brain explodes. It's so crazy. Like literally, they're like getting ready for the semi-formal. I'm like, I remember that semi-formal you were there like that's weird you know dude my niece is probably gonna have a kid before i do <laughs> <laughs> she's yeah. like 21 years old and she's probably gonna have a kid before i do it's like every every time like a friend of mine gets like pregnant or something like that like i i literally will play that like boys to men song like goodbye say goodbye to yesterday how do i <laughs> Yep. Say goodbye to fun and free time and money. <laughs> <laughs> you just made my girlfriend laugh out loud. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, I'm trying to avoid this kid thing like the plague, dude. Anytime anybody brings it up, I just, I want to get it out of their head so they stop. Because, you know, this Christmas is coming up. I got to answer this question again in, in a house full of 40 people. I'm going to be asked 12 times at least. And, and I'm like, I'm infertile. Just don't ask next year because it's going to be really. Uh, it's oh, that's going to be awkward and cruel if you keep bringing it up. Um, yeah, it just is. Yeah, well, every time I talk to my mom, I'm like, so, mom, guess what? You're pregnant. No, no, that's no, that's not it. No, the new Vicodin's coming out. <laughs> yeah.
That's about every nine months. So there you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Every nine months, Jamie comes up with them. Uh, hey, how come you don't have kids? I'm impotent. <laughs> oh, that's awkward. Yeah, so stop asking, all right? I had my uterus ripped out in a factory accident. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what kind of factory I was working in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what the hell? How did you get these girls to come here? I took your advice, Kel. I told him we were gay. <laughs> did you tell Dad and Mr. Darcy? Nah, that's something for each man to discover on his own. <laughs> Alan Jefferson don't know that, so they're dancing, bumping their butts together during the dad dancing, and these girls think, like, oh, look, they found each other. <laughs> so... They don't know that they're viewed as gay right now. <laughs> they think they're cool as hell. Yeah, they think they're so cool, right? But here's the thing. Even if Al and Jefferson were not gay, which they're not, why are they dancing like that? Um, I don't know. I guess sometimes when you dance, you do weird stuff. I don't know. Like, they're... Well, no. I mean, they're, they're, they're so happy to be around them, to be around the young girls. Do you know what I mean? They're just like, they're like yes! They're, they're out of yep. their minds. You know, that's how it's I probably one it. of those things where everything got going, and when they bumped each other's butts, they were like, "Oh, right. hey, oh, like you, know, right, right, like, right. like let's roll." Like we're gonna it, make right. these chicks laugh, <laughs> and they don't realize like they actually think they're gay. <laughs> 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 exactly. It's sweet that they found each other. I'm warning you. I'm going to show you all it takes is a good woman. Well, I've tried. I can never find a girl who could excite me. Although you do. A little. How can we make it a lot? I don't know. I'll think about it. So he gets to play that whole thing out, and that was the end of the episode. It just ends there. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, though, like earlier on when uh, Bud goes, um, he insults Kelly, and he's like, she goes, duh, for the money. Uh, it's obviously a reference to Donna Summer's song, She Works Hard for the Money, and that song was played in Baby Makes Money, mm-hmm. Banking on Marcy, Season 8, Episode 5, yep. and Change for a Buck, Season 8, Episode 11. So... Uh, someone in that staff really liked Donna Summer. She worked hard for the money. Okay, so that one girl, uh, Jamie Lunar, I think she was the one who said, hey, are you guys coming in? Or she might be the one hitting on Bud. Uh, let me get a better look at these two. They kind of look the same in their old age. Well, that was the same girl. No, well, there's Kathleen McLennan and Jamie Lunar. Well, Jamie Lunar, yeah, she's the one who came out, who popped out and said, hey, you guys coming in? Okay. And then at the end, she was the one who was like, hey, you know, basically wanting to turn him straight. It's the same girl. So then Kathleen McLennan must be the one who says, oh, look, they found each other. I think so. Yeah, that's how she got the credit, the writing, the, the acting credit. Uh, but Jamie Lunar was in the TV show Just the Ten of Us, which... I don't know if anybody remembers it. It was kind of a short-lived show, but I used to love it. It was about a bunch of a dad and a bunch of sisters. And anyway, but two other sisters that were on that show were um, Heather Langenkamp from Nightmare on Elm Street, and also the girl I can never remember her name, but she was the blonde girl who turned into the cockroach in Nightmare Four. Was also oh yeah, the workout girl. Oh yeah, the one with the huge hair. She was also in that show. Nice. Well, this girl was also, she's known for Murder in the First, Melrose Place, All My Children, and Savannah. Is her name Brooke Thesis? Yeah, no, it's uh, Thice, I think, but yeah. Thice, yes. Brooke Thice. You were correct. You were correct. (laughs) Oh, it's Thesis. (laughs) Brooke Term Paper. (laughs) (laughs) So, (laughs) Kathleen. Fuck you. (laughs) <laughs> Kathleen McLennan was in Rattlesnake, Seinfeld, for better or worse, or Ladies Man. So if you really were a fan of the girl who says, oh, look, they found each other, you could find her in those movies and shows. It's good to know, because I really thought she stole this whole episode. She really did. I want to look more into her. 
Let's see. She was. She grew up in Bloomington, Illinois. <laughs> no, just kidding. We're not going to waste our time. We'll be right back. <laughs> no, ma'am. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's review. Be sure to join their Facebook group page for all the podcast news and updates. Be sure to subscribe to them on the Apple Podcast app and please leave a review telling them what you think of the show. To subscribe to their YouTube channel, just go to Channels and search up Married with Children Podcast. Now they're available on the TV Time app. Go to your app store and type in TV Time. Join their Patreon and support your favorite podcast with a small monthly donation. You can email them at marriedwchildrenpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for checking out this review. Now Dan, Jamie, and Alex are going to give their final thoughts on this week's episode. All right, guys. So how many times are you squeezing seven into this episode out of five for frat chance, Dan? All right. Um, this is kind of a tough one to rate because there, w- there were a lot of things that I disliked. But I think overall the uh, the jokes were were on par throughout the whole episode and and there were particular moments that stood out that were like above average jokes too. So I think with that and then and I did like that whole seven bit at the end with uh you know with him looking like a little pimp at the dance there and uh and going off with one of the girls and everything. I would give it a three out of five. It's a solid three out of five. Yeah. It was enjoyable. Definitely not the best, but by far definitely not the worst either. There were just some odd things going on and we talked about all those things. It was just odd choices, things I didn't really understand, um, for whatever reasons, whether it went over my head or yeah, no, we got it and I just didn't like it. Mm-hmm. The tableau line did it for you, didn't it? <laughs> That was it. That, that was, was the over your head thing. Yeah, it would have yeah. been a three point five. Exactly. <laughs> Jamie, how many um, times are you cramming seven into this episode out of five for frat chance? I think I'm gonna try to cram them in there four times. Oh, I actually really liked this one. There, the the beginning of it felt very old school to me. As far as like when them starting out with the you food know, jokes, <laughs> the food, yeah, and the right. the, the milk leavens or rather uh, residue, it felt very old school. Married with children, and I appreciate that. Plus, they were uh, we had like heavy Jefferson and Marcy, and I thought that was great. I just thought that there were a lot of classic jokes here, and even though. There were something, honestly, really the only thing I could do without a seven. And I think you could just cut him out of the episode and no one would even notice. And um, <laughs> I think Jamie says that every episode. I do. And I was just about to say that seems to be a running theme these days. And maybe I should stop just trashing the kid. But <laughs> No, I like it. I like it. I like <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, it's kind of interesting when you look at everything the way we look at it and, and so close together the way we do. And then you start, you know, pulling it apart. It really is kind of glaring that they had nothing for nothing. that kid to do. Right. Nothing. Not they, could, they should have called thing. him Shoehorn. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. right. But anyway, overall, I really enjoyed this episode. It kind of flew by, and uh, I yeah. enjoyed watching it. So that was cool. All right. So our special guest star for this week, Aaron Duncan. How many times are you cramming? Seven. Into this episode, out of five. Boy, because it, it's gone up now a little bit after doing this podcast. Um, but I'm right between Jamie and Dan, and I'm going to go – yeah, it's a good place to be. But um, <laughs> I'm going to go 3.5 on this. I really, like, agree with what Jamie said. Like, the beginning did feel so old school. I love that. Um, you know, I love, uh, of course, the dad dancing – um, Al's, you know, there's pizza jokes in there, so that's going to put it up for me. The only thing is, is like the seven stuff, how it has nothing to do with the narrative. Um, it really, it, 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 I think that's the only thing that sets it back for me. But, uh, but I mean, 3.5 out of five, that's pretty good. So, that's like, so good. No, I, yeah, yeah, I very much enjoyed it. I think the, the only thing I can say about seven is, is like, because it would to carry on Jamie's thought is like, why could I feel like he, his character would have worked better if they would have got an ugly kid instead of like <laughs> a, like a 
all American typical like, oh, we're gonna put a cute kid in the show. Oh, they would have got an ugly child that would have been better. Then Oliver look alike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. Yep. Totally. I agree with your rating. I was gonna say three point five out of five. I like this episode. It's good. It ends with a non dramatic note. Yeah, there's definitely some jokes that are not amazing. Nothing that over that like way down the episode or anything like that. Um lots of solid jokes. Uh great stuff from Marcy. Great old school stuff in the beginning. The stuff with Seven. Um, did it work? Um, well, he had the food in the beginning, the second one, well, then he had the Scrabble thing, then he had the, I'm not hanging out with you because I'm getting a date, then he was dancing with the girls. You know, I just don't like him in general, so even if those things were okay, I guess, for him, I just don't want him or need him. So, it wasn't like they were the worst ways to put him in here, but, again, it's just a waste of time. And it's just, it doesn't add anything. So, 